What's cracking people, Angelic Mayhem here. Welcome to Final Thoughts, the video series where I point out the pros and cons of a brand new video game title so that you can decide for yourself if it's right for you. In this episode, I have finished the game Contrast in just over six hours. This game is all about plot and puzzles. Uh, unlike most of my other reviews, the gameplay footage that you're watching in the background is only from the first ten minutes of the game to prevent spoilers. In this series, you never have to wait for my opinion. In this case, at the risk of being too pithy and without exaggeration, this is one of the best games that I've ever played. But is it right for you? Well, let's find out. To begin, Contrast is a 3D puzzle solving game with a twist. The puzzles require you to assimilate with the shadows on the walls, turning the game at key moments into a 2D platformer. You play as Dawn, the imaginary friend of a precocious little girl named Dee Dee, whose family life is, shall we say, less than optimal. Uh, the plot of the game revolves around you following Dee Dee around as she sneaks out of her bedroom at night to explore the world, assisting her past obstacles she cannot traverse on her own and attempting to piece together the gritty happenings of her life. The game is set in a beautiful but strange world that is gorgeous and reminiscent of the Art Deco style you would see in classic film noir movies. Throughout the game, there are also so-called luminaries, which are collectibles you can pick up for fun. While most just require a little bit of exploration in back alleys and such, some require shadow-popping puzzle-solving of their own. You can also pick up items from around the world that give you more backstory into Dee Dee and her family. Your enjoyment of the game will be doubled, I assure you, if you examine and or read each of these items as you grab them. This is the first game from Compulsion Games, a collaboration of video game professionals in Montreal, Canada. Normally, I'd have more to tell you about the developers, but their corporate website is so scatterbrained and poorly designed that I'm not entirely sure it hasn't been adjusted by hackers. So let's talk about pros and cons. First up, the pros. Uh, it's a close race between story and style in this game, but for me, I think that the story just edges out the whim. Uh, it is at once both sweet and dark, a tough combination. Uh, I won't spoil it for you, but in every conceivable aspect, the plot does not end where it begins, and that is hard to do. With that said, second place belongs to the Art Deco film noir setting of this game, which is absolutely gorgeous. Exploring this world, even to its edges, will feed you enough eye candy to fill a Halloween bucket. In the game, the word chiaroscuro appears. I won't tell you where because that's a spoiler. Chiaroscuro is an Italian word. It means the interplay between light and shadow. That's a 2400 SAT word. And when I saw that, I was like, ha ha, nice. As you shift from shadows to real life and then back again, there is a very subtle saturation shift between the vibrant colors of real life and the more washed look of the shadows. As weird as it sounds, it really adds something. Finally, the shadow jump mechanic is amazing and really well done. It defines the game and yet isn't gimmicky or ostentatious. Uh, it also adds some interesting solutions to the puzzles. Uh, for instance, you can use your shadow jump ability to circumvent locked doors by passing through windows while staying in the light. All right, now let's talk about cons. Um, I have yet to meet the perfect game, and to wit, Dawn is referred to as an acrobat, but she does nothing acrobatic other than jump, uh, which she does really high, but nonetheless, it's just the one thing. If she could roll or do splits or crawl through tight places or swing from pipe to pipe, it would really have made the puzzles amazing and would have filled out her character a little more um, also just as a, as a video game model as a 3d you know thing in the video game I found her to be very stiff okay she walks weird and you know she's just kind of odd uh, the puzzles are challenging and fold in well with the story however only two of the puzzles have multiple ways to beat them at each puzzle that I came across, I tried alternative ways to accomplish the same thing and was rarely rewarded. I really think that this game could have bordered on perfection had they offered multiple solutions to almost every puzzle. 
Uh, the game violates its own rules by allowing Dawn to crash through wooden fences and other such barricades, though not through glass, with her dash mechanic. While rare, I would have preferred if these were instead handled with more shadow puzzles. Okay, I thought it, they felt a little cheap to me. Uh, there is one puzzle involving an ogre that was maddeningly difficult to beat. Also, the animation broke when I was playing and the ogre remained on the screen even after I beat him. Uh, this game is basically a story, so is, uh, as a result, very, very linear. Uh, you can't progress out of an area until you complete certain tasks, and you are walking through basically a scripted movie. I personally had no problem with this um, because, you know, it's a puzzle game, so that should be expected. But I have seen some complaints on Steam about it, so I figured I'd mention it. Uh, the world is 3D with 2D puzzles. As a result, to prevent you from solving certain puzzles in the 3D world, the developers throw up some invisible walls uh, in certain places that are just aggravating. Um, most of the time, they're quite noticeable, and they make me sad because those were really great opportunities to, again, offer multiple ways to beat the puzzles. To interact with objects or puzzles, you have to press the E key. However, once inside the event or puzzle, it doesn't tell you to press the E key again to get back out of it. So the first time that you, you know, you're in there, you kind of feel like you're lost. Um, even Now this is even though that the backspace key is the one that you've been using for most of the game to get back out of things. As is always the case, whenever I see it, one of the cons is that you cannot re-keybind. Uh, the options menu needs a lot of work. I understand that you only have to deal with them for five minutes at the start of the game, but still they are unwieldy and frankly odd. Uh, there are only certain ledges that you can grab. They are highlighted with a faint white glow. Sometimes, however, the light from the puzzles obscures the glow of the grabbable pipes, making the next step in the puzzle a little more mysterious than it should be. Uh, this is more a problem at the start of the game than at the end. Um, I didn't see it at all at the end of the game. Uh, also, there are many places where you would expect to be able to grab, but you can't because there isn't a pipe there, uh, which again, I think is a missed opportunity. And uh, finally, the only true technical flaws in the game are a tiny number of places where your character can get stuck or uh, we'll call it bugged out. Uh, sometimes, if you approach a wall at an odd angle, you can swing the camera around to see No Man's Land. And Dawn will do a very weird falling animation, uh, even when she's standing on the ground, if she just kind of happens to wedge herself into a weird spot. Um, this is a very minor note, and mostly it's funny when it happens, doesn't really upset the flow of the game. But it is an oversight that I think should have been ironed out during beta testing. So, final thoughts. There are precious few video games in this world that can keep you riveted to your screen with a story so engaging and vibrant that you can't stop playing. Nowadays, developers are more interested in their forums than they are in their own imaginations because it's easier to ski down a mountain than it is to climb up it. Compulsion Games isn't wearing any skis, and if they keep putting out games like Contrast, they're going to quickly reach the summit of our industry. This game is a gem and worth every penny. Is it right for you? Well, only you can decide that, and hopefully this video has helped. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will try to answer them. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button or subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this in the future. I'm Angelic Mayhem, and I'll see you next time.